After five films, Emma Watson so embodies the character of Hermione Granger that it's almost impossible now to think of anyone else in that role. Emma Watson's the perfect Hermione Granger because she has spunk. In her real life, she's a very upbeat, challenging type of girl, and it's almost a, a hand-to-glove fit for the type of character Hermione has to be in these films. She was right for the role. I mean, if you think back to when the first Harry Potter was, whoever would have got it would have been right in the sense they were going to be Hermione. Emma Charlotte Dury Watson was born on April 15, 1990, in Paris. Her parents are Jacqueline and Chris Watson, English lawyers who are now divorced. She lived in Paris until the age of five when she moved with her mother and brother to Oxford, England, following her parents' divorce. At Oxford, she attended the Dragon School, where her teachers were so impressed with her acting in several performances that her name was passed to casting agents for the role of Hermione Granger. My school put me forward for the audition. I think there were about 16 of us all together auditioning, um, girls and boys, ages from 10 to 12. They had gotten, of course, thousands and thousands of videotapes. And, and she, unlike Daniel, had no acting, prior acting experience, so for her, this was completely new. She eventually outperformed thousands of other girls who had applied for the role. And after eight auditions, producer David Heyman told Watson that she had been cast for the role of Hermione Granger. When Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was released, Watson was still just 11 years old. I think that Emma Watson was totally believable as a certain kind of little girl. Uh, J.K. Rowling has said that Hermione was much like herself at the same age, kind of a um, bossy, precociously smart little, you know, know-it-all who, um, you know, was the kind of prototypical girl, perfectionist, A student. I mean, she's a pretty little girl, but she's not someone who's such a raving beauty that that's all you can think of. You really believed in her as a nerd, which is what she has to be fundamentally to play Hermione. But like a flower blooming before our very eyes, Emma Watson, the cute 11-year-old bookworm, was suddenly a star in one of the most successful motion pictures of all time. Emma Watson, uh, from the start, appeared like the one who was most likely to make it. Uh, she did seem like a professional on screen. She seemed to know what she was doing. She seemed to know where the camera was. She seemed to pick her angles uh, in a way that the others weren't quite ready to do. Three months after the premiere of Sorcerer's Stone, filming began on the second Harry Potter movie, The Chamber of Secrets. And Watson again starred as Hermione Granger. At 12 years of age, Emma Watson had two hugely successful movies under her belt and was becoming a critical sensation and a seasoned veteran. I think most people just assume that I'm exactly like Hermione, but I'm not really. I'm kind of a bit different to her. I'm not as academic as she is. I'm much more sporty, and I do lots of art, and I spend a lot more time with my friends. Um, I definitely hope I have a be better fashion sense than she does. But her professional accomplishments aside, Watson was still technically a kid. She lost several baby teeth during the production of the first two films and had to wear dentures to avoid continuity issues. Next came The Prisoner of Azkaban in 2004 and the chance for Emma to act in several dramatic scenes. I trusted you! And all this time, you've been his friend. He's a werewolf. That's why he's been missing classes. How long have you known? Since Professor Snape set the essay. Goblet of Fire followed in 2005, the same year that Emma Watson became the youngest person to appear on the cover of Teen Vogue magazine at age 15. Emma Watson's image over the years has really changed. She started out as this little girl and everyone thought she was very cute and we've seen her mature into this young woman who's become a bit of a fashion icon. In 2007, she acted in Order of the Phoenix and was voted 98th in the FHM 100 Sexiest Women in the World list of 2007. With that came confirmation, if any was needed, that Emma Watson was now a teen idol.
when she was doing publicity for the latest Harry Potter movie, you saw this shift and she was wearing a lot of Chanel and she was dressing a little more sophisticated. She looked a little more adult. She's turned into a very pretty and fashionable young woman and someone who a lot of young girls look at as a role model. Over the years, the stars of Harry Potter became fast friends. But that friendship was tested when the seventh and final Harry Potter book was published, and Watson learned that she would have to kiss her co-star Rupert Grint in the final Harry Potter movie. That will be a key test. We met these kids as kids, and they're going to have to become sexual beings for us. They're going to have to find that erotic spark um, and have it not be creepy. And it's hard not to think of them in a kind of brotherly, sisterly way. And they've got to beat that on screen. Shooting of the next installment is slated for some time in 2008. Amazingly, Watson appears to have had a relatively normal childhood. She's gotten straight A's in her academics and is the only one of the Potter trio with plans to go to college. If you compare Emma Watson to a lot of the teen stars in Hollywood, she's really an angel. She really has a pretty clean image. We're probably not going to see a picture of Emma Watson naked on the internet anytime soon. Like Daniel, she'll be appearing in the final two Harry Potter movies, earning a reported $10 million. For Harry Potter fans, it seems like a small price to pay to keep her at Hogwarts just a little while longer.